Nearly a decade ago, a very fatal tragedy occurred in a secluded deep blue hue river in Mindanao, Philippines. The Hinachuan Enchanted River is a flawless deep saltwater spring that flows into the Pacific Ocean. It is around 24 meters or 80 feet deep and is just barely long enough to be considered a river. Yet, the flow attracts visitors from around the world who want to experience the beautiful waters that locals have long thought to be miraculous. Underneath the entrancing blue waters lurks a cave system that plunges to great depths, contributing to the river's enchanting and mystical allure. Truly an exquisite and enigmatic location, boasting with unparalleled levels of charm that justifies its name as the enchanted river of Hanachuan. Dr. Alfonso Amores was extremely captivated by the river's beauty and mystique, leading him to embark on five expeditions to the site since 2010. During his explorations, he extended the cave system below to a depth of 87 meters or 285 feet, driven by his fascination with the enchanted river. However, during his sixth visit in 2014, tragedy struck and he unknowingly took his final dive leaving behind a legacy of passion and curiosity. This is the enchanted river of nature and disaster of 2014. The Hinatuan Enchanted River, also called the Hinatuan Sacred River, is a deep spring river on the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. It flows into the Philippine Sea and the Pacific Ocean at Bangre Talisi, Hinatuan, Serigao del Sur, it is found between the boundaries of barangays of Telese and Camatong. It earned the moniker Enchanted River from the diplomat Maldisto Forlan, who described the river in his poem entitled Rio Encantado. Hanachuan Bay, which is the habitat of various species of turtles, is located at its mouth. Its mouth also offers a safe anchorage against storms and typhoons. The river's unusual colors and unexplored depths have inspired various local legends. One story tells of fairies that added the color of sapphire and jade to the river to make its unique shade. Local fisher folk also report seeing fish in the river that cannot be caught through any means. According to locals, the river was called the Enchanted River because of the Engantos that dwell there, which in Filipino culture are mythical environmental spirits that are said to have the ability to appear in human form. Their legends also say that the river is haunted by supernatural beings, which act as its protectors. Since 2017, the local government of Hanachuan has prohibited tourists from swimming in the main pool due to preservation and maintenance. However, they have designated a swimming area for tourists near the center of the lagoon, which is 10 meters or 33 feet away from the main pool. The first discovery and exploration to the cave of the Hanachuan Enchanted River was made by Alex Santos in 1999. The major exploration to the cave system started 11 years later, when a group of three cave divers, led by Dr. Alfonso Amores, with team members Benil Gastardo and Emiji Gillimore, entered the cave in February 2010. The major exploration led to the discovery of a hidden cave opening at 30 meters or 98 feet depth. Succeeding expeditions with Dr. Amores led to the discovery of the underwater cave's chamber, referred to as Mare's Chamber. During the sixth expedition of the cave history on June the 17th, 2014, is when the fatal tragedy of Dr. Amores occurred. Dr. Alfonso Amores, known in the island as Doc Boy, was brought up in the old Apona Publican on Macton Island where he was born and raised. He grew up in a large family of 34 individuals and was surrounded by the quintessential public here neighborhood, which played a significant role in shaping his character and values. He always had a passion for medicine, ever since he was a child growing up on Macton Island in the Philippines. He was fascinated by the human body and the intricate workings of its systems, and he knew from a young age that he wanted to pursue a career in medicine. After completing his undergraduate studies, Dr. Amores enrolled in the Cebu Institute of Medicine, where he earned his medical degree in 1971. He then set his sights on furthering his education, 
and honing his skills in the field of plastic surgery, so he packed his bags and headed to the United States. With his extensive education and training complete, Dr. Amore set out to put his skills to use. He practiced plastic surgery in the US for nearly two decades, from 1982 to the year 2000. Despite his success in the US, Dr. Amores never forgot his roots in the Philippines. He remained connected to his homeland and often returned to visit family and friends on Macton Island. He also provided charitable medical services to those in need in the Philippines, using his expertise to improve the lives of others. After practicing surgery for 20 years in the United States, Dr. Amores decided to return to his home country, the Philippines, to enjoy his retirement. But he was not the kind of man who would be happy to whittle away his years in a rocking chair while watching the seasons pass. He instead chose to do cave diving explorations. Unable to get satisfaction from breathing air or gas from a standard scuba setup, he embarked to get educated in the use of a closed circuit rebreather. His weapon of choice was the Evolution Closed Circuit Rebreather, which he trained up to try mix level and of which he qualified as an IANTD Evolution Recreational Instructor. He did his cave diving certification through the National Association of Cave Divers in the extensive cave systems of northern Florida. His discovery of the powered underwater cave system in Magdana Island during solo exploration dives in 2002 marked the birth of the cave diving culture in the central Philippines. Cave diving was not as popular as scuba diving in the Philippines, until Dr. Amores started the Filipino Divers Association. In 2011, he made a dive with his unit to 100 meters or 330 feet. Quite a feat considering he was already 65 years old at that time. His efforts to go beyond certain barriers, such as age, made people truly believe that he could do anything. He lived his life to the fullest, embracing challenges and pushing boundaries all while making a difference in the world. Therefore, when the news of his unforeseen tragedy circulated around the island of Mactan and those who knew him, it was seen as a devastating void that could never be filled. On June the 17th, 2014, Doc Morris and two of his cave diving students, one of which was named Jamie Lepak, arrived at the Enchanted River site. The purpose of the dive was to set up safety measures and a guideline for a wildlife film documentary crew, eager to capture footage of the river's mystical beauty. It should be noted that Doc, now 68 years old, was diagnosed with his heart ailment at the age of 40, but this did not stop him from cave diving. In addition, he was also admitted for pneumonia a few weeks before this dive. As mentioned prior, Dr. Amores was not the first to discover the cave system but he was the first to discover the deeper chambers of the cave. In his previous exploration dives of this cave, Doc discovered a very tight passageway that led to a bigger chamber and a few more passageways. The passage was subsequently named Doc's Door. After completing their equipment checks, Doc and his fellow student divers prepared to descend into the depths of the Enchanted River. Diving in the Enchanted River is always a daunting challenge, and it is viewed as a great accomplishment for any diver who emerges unscathed. The cave entrance is narrow, allowing only one person to enter at a time. However, the current guided the team effortlessly inside. The same current that assisted them in entering the cave also made exiting very challenging, as the water tends to pull divers back towards the cave. If the current is not too strong, divers may be fortunate enough to make it out with ease. With this in mind, and the risks acknowledged, with Doc leading the way, the team began their descent into the cave system during low tide. The team descended 30 meters, or 98 feet, diving to the bottom of the pool. At this point, a large log can be seen that marks the split into a right and left lane to get to Doc's door and the entry point to Mayor's chamber. Although the left lane, called Patrice's Way, located at 32 meters or 102 feet is an easier access point because it hugs a cavity on the left wall, which usually lessens the current flow, the team decided to enter Mayor's Chamber, laying line in the right lane, called Bernil's Crawl, 
also located at 32 meters or 105 feet, which is a crawling descent to Dog's Door. As the team pushed forward, they attempted to enter through Burnell's Crawl, but they encountered a significant deposit of sediment in the fissure, causing the current to flow faster than they could handle. Consequently, they switched to Patrice's Way to reach Dog's Door. Unfortunately, the current in Patrice's Way was even stronger, and it proved to be even more challenging to enter. The primary reason for this difficulty was the fact that the team made their dive during the descending low tide. The low tide made the current flow of the cave's fresh water stronger due to the absence of an opposing force of the flooding seawater. In addition, while Patrice's Way is still wide enough for divers to enter the cave, the pileup of sediment in Bernil's Crawl eventually diverted the water flow into Patrice's Way, thus making it harder to overcome the outgoing flow. The team discovered that they needed to exercise extreme caution in response to the swift and forceful current, both entering and exiting the cave system. They were exerting too much effort and breathing more air than usual just to try to push into the cave. Despite the strong currents, it's unclear why Doc didn't decide to call off the dive at this point. In spite of the challenging conditions, Doc was determined to press on with the dive due to the upcoming documentary shoot for GMA 7 Born to be Wild, which had enlisted the team's expertise, and Doc didn't want to disappoint the film crew. With this in mind, the team soldiered on and eventually made their way through Patrice's way to reach Mare's chamber, taking care to lay line for the shoot the following day. This chamber was previously measured by Dog's team to be 37 meters or 121 feet long and 31 meters or 101 feet wide with a max height of 8 meters or 26 feet. This time, more sedimentation on the bed made the bottom closer to the ceiling. There were several fish swimming with the team inside the chamber. The team continued their dive in the cave system and reached Kelvin's kneecap at a depth of 52 meters or 171 feet. They then proceeded to pause passage and continued diving until they reached a depth of around 87 meters or 285 feet, at which point they decided to end the dive. Two factors influenced this decision. Firstly, the team wasted a substantial amount of time and air trying to pass Patrice's way, and they had to follow the rule of thirds, which meant ensuring that they had enough air to make it back to the surface. Secondly, they had already reached the limit of their planned exploration, and the film crew had no intention of venturing into the unexplored sections for the shoot the following day. Therefore, there was no potential profit to justify risking their lives in such a perilous situation and they turned the dive. Unbeknownst to Doc and the team, a deadly siphon in Mare's chamber awaited them, which would mean they would need two-thirds and some extra to be able to exit the cave comfortably, a situation they were neither aware nor prepared to handle. Siphon comes from the French siphon, or Spanish siphon. It is a passage where the water reaches the roof, so there is no air movement between one side and the other. In general, these passages are considered to be more dangerous because of strong flow of the current. Upon their return to Mare's chamber, the team prepared to exit the cave by navigating a narrow passage through Dog's door. However, Jamie Lepac, one of the student divers, was taken aback when Dog changed the exit order, instructing the two cave diving students to proceed ahead of him. They were surprised but could not argue because he was directing them. But Jamie noticed something irregular about Doc because he wasn't moving his feet. He did not respond when he made a hand, OK. Instead, he replied with his right arm up, signaling them to go ahead of him. While making their way towards the exit of Mayor's chamber and approaching Doc's door, the team became trapped in a treacherous siphon, which was life-threatening to the team. Given that Doc was the last in line, the current proved to be extremely strenuous on his body and heart, putting him in greater danger. Despite being young and inexperienced, the students managed to summon enough strength to navigate through the strong current that was flowing through Dog's door. However, Dog struggled tremendously and was unable to pass the tight passageway through the current as it kept pulling him back into Mare's chamber, 
despite his multiple attempts. In fact, he grew weaker and more fatigued as he continued to push through the powerful current. Jamie noticed his mentor struggling and attempted to rescue him. However, Jamie's efforts were hindered by the fact that he was also running out of air due to swimming against the powerful current. When swimming against the current in cave diving, divers use more air compared to when swimming with the current or when there is no current at all. This is because the resistance of the water flowing against the diver requires more effort and energy to swim. And as a result, the diver breathes more rapidly and consumes more air. As a result, the air supply of all team members was rapidly depleting and reaching critical levels, adding to the urgency of their escape from the cave. In cave diving, the primary rule is to prioritize your own safety first. Therefore, despite feeling helpless, the students were left with no option but to surface, leaving Doc trapped in the unforgiving currents of the siphon. The students continued their journey towards the exit, traversing through Doc's door and Patrice's way, all whilst fighting the strong current. After his students departed, Doc knew he was in a very dire situation, and the probability of him surviving now was ever so slight. In a last-ditch effort to stay anchored, he tied one of his hands to the line to prevent the strong current from sweeping him away. Despite his dwindling oxygen levels and a resolve not to give up, Doc summoned his last ounce of strength and kicked his legs with all his might and tried to squeeze through the tight opening that was Doc's door. However, he was not getting enough air to compensate for his strenuous activity and in a sudden turn of events, he suffered a heart attack due to the tension on his already weakened heart. At this point, Doc's chances of exiting the cave alive were next to impossible, and it would take a miracle for him to survive. He was trapped in a treacherous siphon, struggling to survive as his oxygen levels dwindled and his heart gave out. After a total dive time of 1 hour and 15 minutes, the students completely drained, finally surfaced and immediately contacted the authorities, informing them of their mentor's dire situation. As they were aware of Doc's dwindling air supply, they knew that time was of the essence. Doc's brother, Lapu Lapu, City Vice Mayor Maro Amores, promptly travelled to Saragal del Sur upon receiving reports of the incident. When rescue divers arrived on the scene and assessed the situation, they realised that attempting to enter the cave system would prove fatal to their exit due to the powerful current. After inferring the tragic outcome, they made the heartbreaking decision to hold the rescue as they knew that Doc would no longer be alive. The recovery operation would now become a body recovery. Jake Miranda, a cave diver from Serigo City, led the eight-hour retrieval of Doc's body, which was found 40 meters deep, submerged in Mayor's chamber. The autopsy reports conducted by the investigators in Serigo City confirmed that Doc died from a heart attack. The tragic incident caused the Enchanted River management to temporarily close the area. Doc's body was brought back to Cebu and laid to rest on Wednesday at the Mactan Memorial Gardens after a 10 a.m. mass at Our Lady of Sacred Heart Parish in Barangay Marigondon, Lapu Lapu City. He is survived by his wife, Luz, a son and two daughters. It is a heartbreaking tragedy that once again highlights the dangers of cave diving. While these brave divers know the risks involved, it doesn't make it any less devastating when something like this happens. Doc Amores dedicated his life to exploring the mysteries of the underwater world, but unfortunately, his passion ultimately led to his untimely death. It is a reminder of just how fragile life can be and how quickly things can go wrong, even for the most experienced divers. Doc's family and loved ones are left to mourn his passing, and the diving community has lost a true pioneer. May he rest in peace. This has been Gripping Horror. I hope to see you in the next one.